Libra, hello and welcome to your weekly reading for the week of September 15th through the 21st. Let's dive right in. We've got the death card. With Pluto in our fourth house, it's giving an end off with their head to anyone who threatens our emotional foundation. And I would say that this is outer world instances, people who you come across who maybe they have crossed you before. It's happened before. And this time you have a new set of principles. You have a new set of morals and a self-value that cannot be shaken. You have the Knight of Wands. You all have transformed significantly. And you have a new scepter with which you walk around the world. Parading on your white horse. Go Libra, go. Look at this glow. And I love about this death card. This figure has um, a fern growing out of its back. And there's a rose blooming. And we see Saturn on the glyphs. So Saturn is in Pisces, representing our house of daily life. As we are in the sign of daily life, our 12th house is Virgo. So whether that is solarly from a soul level or from a rising level, if you're a Libra rising, Virgo is our 12th house. So we are getting the details together, even spiritually, so that come Pisces season in the next six months, we can just relax, we can go with the flow. We are the queen of cups. So we have a lot of emotional fortitude and it might be good to go sit by a body of water or to have a nice dialogue at some point over this gorgeous weekend. At the time that I'm recording this ahead of the week, it is Friday, Venus Day, Friday the 13th. And we have the four of cups. So the queen of cups might be comforting the four of cups or the queen of cups might well realize that they have that feeling, that vibration of the four of cups. But look, from the death to the world card, it feels like you lose the world and gain your soul this week like you lose any sense of needing to be likable or you know someone's pet in their pocket to just being sovereign to being of yourself true to yourself true to the voice that you need to defend yourself with to defend your beliefs with because of this knight of wands it does speak to living up to something bigger and maybe even your ideas supporting you as you build a solid emotional foundation we have Krishna. I want to pull one for each, and we're going to dive in with Kali today. Mantra Shakti. The words that we speak with that Knight of Wands can create and destroy realities. Guya Kali. Look at her. She's balancing both her scepter and her scythe with grace, with dignity, with elegance. She knows who she is, and she knows who she is not anymore. We have Kali Kapali. Eight, giving that Saturn energy of making decisions that honor you emotionally. That's what that Four of Cups would be speaking to. And we have Lalita Tripura Sundari with the world. All right, we're going to get the bases loaded. And this South Node in Libra is really giving that we have left the comfort zone of codependency. We've left that status of I need to be people pleasing, a devout people pleaser, and follow the flow of external events. Um, what, the, what the Libra scales once to me represented was, I weigh my heart against your heart, and we see whose heart is heavier. Libra, reclaim the scale. A few weeks ago I mentioned Lilith will do it for you if you don't do it willingly. If you don't reclaim the scale and weigh your heart against the feather, working with Goddess Ma'at, you will find yourself time and time again being forced to do the most. Black Moon Lilith currently is at eight degrees Libra, so it is giving that we have to make decisions to step out of our comfort zone. Where our comfort zone ends is where life begins. So I wanna start with looking at this Knight of Wands. Practical advice, you possess an incredible amount of energy. Bring light into the darkness. Help those who are weaker than yourself. Commit yourself to meaningful projects that will benefit many people. Where the darkness is greatest, your light is most needed. It is here that you will discover your life's purpose, a mission so great that it will take a whole lifetime to accomplish. Start your journey now. That may well be in relationships. It might well be in what people say to you or the things that once you would let slide and then it's like your whole system is off because that scale has gone off of the um, base weight or the weight that you agreed to to carry for other people that heartfelt emotion with the death card that speaks to the ending of a cycle to birth a new one 
we do have to die to ourselves so that when we die, we don't actually lose all of us. Practical advice. If you want your life to be fruitful, you have to attend to what needs to be done at the right moment. Which one of your fruits is ripe, which is still missing? What is no longer fitting? How do you realize your desires? So that with the Queen of Cups, I feel like the Queen of Cups will speak to how we realize our desires. Take a walk along a river or lake. Meditate near the water. Embellish yourself and your surroundings. Show the beauty and costliness of your feelings. Open up your heart. In order to have an open heart, Libra, we have to have a clear boundary. We have to be able to speak our boundaries. And if we don't feel safe to speak our boundaries, we need to withdraw from certain situations. We need to not make it easy for people to latch on to us, to sit next to us and get a taste of our cup. We need to make sure that we have that cup with a lid on it and that we feel safe enough in the environments that we are in to support ourselves with vocal dialogue with even if it's a text message it's something that we have to be very firm moving forward libra the four of cups explore your feelings relax and allow your spirit to float define your boundaries define your boundaries libra it is in deep meditation and silence that you will find the right words to express your previously mute emotions and experiences. Wow, so this is lose the word world, gain the word. Lose the world, gain your soul, Libra. Your own personal motivation. I'm going to re go into this one. The tree in the picture is a symbol of nature and also of a man as a special part of nature. The young man in the image is shown sitting at the root of the tree, meaning that he is rooted in himself. On the one hand, this card counsels you to interrupt your daily routine in order to find refuge within yourself and to contemplate your situation. On the other, it challenges you to stop your brooding, to find a new direction in life, and to reach for the stars, like the tree. Expect new emotional experiences. Note the hand. The cup above the tree reminds us of the card of the Ace of Cups. Here it is, also a matter of ups and downs, joys and sorrows, and of finding the right balance between your own feelings and those of others. You might have to accept this new cup no matter what its contents. Or you might refuse to accept this cup. Quite often, it is this refusal or saying the simple word no that has been missing from your life previously. So we can see that this guy is slumped over. It's almost like he doesn't have a backbone. And this bird feminine figure is standing with her like chesticles all the way out, straight up, like supported, just like this tree is. I'm not judging because I'm a Libra. I understand more than anyone. I have a Libra stellium, y'all. The bird in the tree warns you of your own eccentricities and flights of fancy. At the same time, it heralds the coming of new enthusiasm and new meanings. The shadowy figure on the left, uniting a bird's head with a female body, represents your emotional reserves. But beware, ancient Greek myths describe the sirens this way. Soul birds are literally bewitchers. Ulysses escaped from being lured into destruction by the power of their seductive song, only by tying himself to the mast and sealing the ears of his comrades with wax. So you have to tune out other people's frequencies energetically and emotionally. Because Pluto has retrograded into Capricorn, your fourth house, we have Pluto, it's not blasting our fifth house. It's not blasting away the vibrations of other people. So it's up to us to unearth where we've known that there's rot, we know that there's spoil. We know that people have been talking about us behind our back, Libra. We know it. And those people need to get the hand. They need to get the hand of judgment to say, this is my line. Not the hand where you backhand them, but this is my line. If you cross it, there will be consequences that will be sending you right back to yourself. You know, it's just a matter of what people have done to put themselves in these positions with us. Because we've seen it one too many times, but now Black Moon Libra, Black Moon Lilith is in the sign of Libra, and now it's Black Moon Libra. <laughs> she got an update. Okay, we got the world card. La Rueda de la Fortuna. Practical advice. You learn to work in harmony with your destiny by lovingly and critically accepting chance and correlations that are beyond your comprehension. Tarot constitutes an ideal training ground as it allows for you to make use of coincidences. For the ne next 10 days, draw a card every day. Easy for me, but Libra, do you have a deck of tarot cards? Can you buy an oracle deck if you're afraid of the tarot? I understand. I was too. And here I am reading tarot for the world online. It feels amazing to glow up and to grow past the ideas that people had for me in my life, to claim my life as my own. 
Great resolution. The middle, the disc in the middle is divided into two parts indicating human consciousness and the unconscious mind. Both parts of the image complement each other, but differences are also apparent. The lower section is full of symbols and signs while the upper areas are empty. This might suggest that the me messages of the unconscious are conveyed through symbols alone. The Greek word symbol in a general sense means that which has been thrown together. An appropriate concept for this card. The wholeness of the self can only be achieved by uniting the conscious and the unconscious mind. If the individual is reconciled with their destiny, they will be in harmony with the world and experience synchronicity and resonance. And it feels good when we are in synchronicity and residence. Residence. Maybe you are applying for an artist in residence and you need new boundaries with people because you can't just live in a shared communal space and have your dishes and your snacks all out there where people who are hungry and didn't bring their dishes are thinking, oh great, look, Libra's so nice. Look, look at what they left me. You gotta decide, Libra. Krishna, there is spiritual intelligence within your soul. Let yourself burn bright for what inspires you and you shall see the path to fruition clearly before you. Believe in what is meant to be. I would say that it's meant that we live a daily life that owns up to what we believe in. It's just that simple. What do you believe in? What moves you? What is at the foundation of your emotions? At the base of your cup? What's in your cup? Are there dregs of rose powder, cacao, coffee, tea leaves, sadness, grief? We have to own it, Libra, and that will allow for us to make something beautiful of ourselves and of our life. Mantra Shakti. Oh, I love that we're going kind of back in slingshot momentum. Okay, the message of this oracle is that you have the divine birthright to choose how to deal with negativity. You do not need to allow it to gain influence on your being. Allow others the choice to behave as they wish with the respect that each path is unique, that we cannot know how another needs to learn and grow through their life journey. However, that is not an excuse to allow for negativity to infiltrate your being and undermine your spiritual relationship with yourself. Mm. If you have the need of something, ask for it. So this is that clarification of, hey, I have an idea. Let me move forward with it. Let me speak it. Let it support me. Guyakali. Our divine mother who knows all, with every answer and every mystery within her power to disclose, provides knowledge at the right time and in the best way. In answer to your question about the Queen of Cups, we're going to sit by some water this weekend, Libra. It's going to serve you. You see how these two queens look like they can be hanging out? You might come across someone who looks like either of these people. I would talk to the lady with a mustache, just saying. It could be me. <laughs> Rest and reflect upon your insights, allowing your wisdom rather than a reaction to distill their usefulness and value. An entirely new perspective about a matter of importance is awakening. A secret shall be revealed and all you need to know will be given to you. So this is the counterpart of Lalita Tripura. She's without any blood and very much a more modest and youthful appearance of Guyakali. She does not dwell in the light and is not accessible to anyone who simply calls on her as a loving mother. She is so powerful and so potentially disturbing in her fierce liberation that she is shrouded in mystery, unknowable to any except those who are able to tolerate her revelations. The Tantras teach that to connect with her requires initiation and the guidance of a teacher, which this Queen of Cups might be hinting at. Someone who is very in tune with their emotions might be a good teacher for you. Not all of our teachers are alive. One of my best teachers is this Oracle deck where I feel specific messages for me come through as I do these readings, as I pull cards for myself. Although there's a mediator of the publishing house and the writer, Cheryl Yambrach Rose, I feel that that is one of my higher guides, my higher self guides. A guide for aligning my higher self's will to my own human will on a daily basis. So with the Four of Cups, we have Kali Kapali. Look at her go. She looks like Aries. When Kapali manifests her presence, the powerful symbolic teachings of the skull are at play, which look at that, we got the death card. 
How amazing. Skulls represent an ending and also a triumph of a more powerful force, in this case divine will, over a lesser force, typically human ego or plans. The skull indicates a need to acknowledge that while we are a powerful divine spirit with free will and much creativity, we also need to operate within the higher power of far greater wisdom. Mm. So we don't want to resist, but engage with our life path. Again, turning that wheel of fortune to maybe other people's expectations for us that were subconscious underneath our motivations for acting in the world and getting to the heart of the matter without any projections added onto it. So I love that for that card, we got Lalita Tripura Sundari, who seems to be in the light. She seems to work from a place of not needing to be initiated by the Queen of Cups, but just understanding that your reality is shifting, your reality is changing, as we have the Virgo placement in our 12th house, amping us up for the most spiritual time of the year, Pisces season, in my opinion. With luminous grace, she plays her ways into our hearts, softening hardness and despair, awakening the remembrance of light, love, and joy. No matter what you have experienced, your heart shall be cleansed and released from ugliness, sorrow, and pain. Negative karmic legacies will be cleared away. And again, this is with coming clear about what you have to say, having those clear boundaries and knowing what you feel at the base of all of your feelings. Do you feel empowered or do you feel disempowered? Do you feel expansive an expansion or a contraction? These are things to just get down to the base of it. Our divine sister goddess invites you to recognize her golden restorative beauty shining within your heart. Cultivate that which is worthy of such beauty, for this is your essential nature. Grace, gracefully release all else with dignity. Hmm. Yeah, I've been working with this, and I believe it could help my fellow Libras, is whenever I'm in the shower or I get into a body of water, I just imagine myself covered in golden light and just bathing through golden light. Gold, not yellow. Yellow represents joy. Gold is like this AU... 79, I think, on the periodic table. And we, we have a ability to remove stale, stagnant emotions when we purify our energetic body with the hue of gold. From the Healing Waters Oracle deck. Okay, that was from a different reading. I just wanted to see what it was, if it was something new. It doesn't have to be something new, but it does have to be something shuffled slightly. Cleansing, releasing the old, energetic tune-up, new beginnings. I see it, then I pull it. All right, Libra. Have a fantastic week. For those of you Libras just here for the Libra video, go on ahead and watch your rising reading and your moon sign reading. Send one of my readings along to someone who you know could benefit from this kind of guidance. I love you Libras so much. Thank you so much to my subscribers. It means the world to me that you're here. Go on ahead, leave me a like, leave me a comment. Let me know how this energy of the partial lunar eclipse is treating you. We didn't even get into it, but this is what it's all about, Libra. Take yourself and sit by some water this week. It's going to definitely clear some things up and you might make a friend along the way. Until next time, aloha.